Hey there YouTube World Match Sports here, The Welding Geek. And in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about annealing. So, without further ado, let's roll the video. Alright, a little bit about alloys first, and I'll get into the annealing part. When you're dealing with there's all sorts of different alloys of aluminum and steel. I'm going to be talking about aluminum because that's mainly what I work with. Um, so I, I got two different alloys here, same thicknesses. I've got 063-3003 aluminum, which is what I do a lot of my building out of, is this right here. And I have 063-6061 aluminum. Now I've heard a lot of people ask me what gauges are you using and thicknesses and all that stuff. Aluminum is measured in the actual thickness. So when I say 063, that means it's 063 um, thousandths of an inch, uh, sixteenth of an inch. There's 080, 090, and more of your, your steels are based in gauges. So when I say 063, it means I'm using a sixteenth inch thick aluminum. And the 6061 is the alloy. Uh, 6061 is probably your most common alloy of aluminum out there. Um, 3003 is what I use mostly though. Um, it's actually a little bit softer and I'll kind of show you the differences in the alloys in this video. Um, annealing really comes into play when you're dealing with 6061 because I will show this in a later video. Um, when you go bending it or forming it, it's a lot harder. And so the annealing process makes it softer. Also when you're bending, there's grain structure and I'll explain this later in old metals and bending with the grain structure will actually fatigue and crack across that. So the annealing will help that not crack if you have to bend with the grain. You always want to bend against the grain if you can, um, but I'll get deeper into that in a different video when we make our way over to the apron break. So kind of let me show you what annealing does, um, especially with this aluminum, and uh, try to get into it not crazy in depth, but just kind of give you enough information so you'll be able to do it yourself. All right, first things first, I'm gonna kind of show you these two pieces of aluminum, my 3003 and my 6061, kind of how hard it is to bend, non anneal. And then I'm gonna anneal this piece of um, 6061 to show you how much easier it is to bend with your hands after it's annealed. So hopefully this will make sense. I'm just gonna grab this, I'm gonna bend this, <laughs> try to get a bend bend it over. You can see it's pretty tough. Okay. Got that bent over. Here's 3043 aluminum. A lot easier to bend. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can anneal aluminum. A lot of people have asked, what are the scribbly marks on the aluminum for? And that is Sharpie. You can use Sharpie in a propane torch and heat it up and I'll show you here that in a minute and we'll soften it. I'll also show you how to use an oxyacetylene torch to do your annealing. So I'm just going to scribble this down and do the annealing process. I'm going to do this in the fast forward mode so it doesn't take forever and then I'll come back to you and show you how easy this is to bend after it's annealing. So I've got this piece that I just annealed. It's, I let it cool down. You don't want to pick it up after you get done annealing it. But this will just show you how easy it is now to bend that same 6061 aluminum. It almost gets it to about the 3 below 3. You could probably get it softer too if you put more heat into it. But that's what annealing does. It makes it really soft. Now when I'm doing like domes, I'm using 063 3 below 3 aluminum. I, I anneal it too because it even makes this even softer. And as you're planishing it, as you're working the material, it's actually work hardening back to its original strength or maybe even stronger. Um, but that's the purpose of annealing. I'm going to show you one other way to anneal if you have access to an acetylene torch. Um, I feel like most people are going to have access to a propane torch and a Sharpie. Um, so this is not, I feel like the acetylene torch is the better way to anneal. 
but it, you can anneal multiple times to get to the softness that you want. So I'll show you how I use the acetylene torch real quick, and that should be the end of the video. So let's switch over and do that. All right, I've got my trusty acetylene torch here. I'm just going to show you how I would go about annealing with the acetylene torch. So with the acetylene, see how you have all the soot? You want to take it so where you just have a barely amount of soot coming off your flame here. And that soot is what you're going to use as the sharpie, just like that. And you can see the soot that I put on there from that flame. You don't want too hot of a flame like this. There's not going to be a whole lot of soot coming off of that flame. You want it to be slightly, you can start to see the soot. And then what you're going to do is turn on your oxygen. Let's get your, this is a cutting torch. You can actually do this with the gas torch down here, Jake. You can do the same thing and just use that without kicking your oxygen off, otherwise you're going to blow through it. And burn that soot off. You see how faster that is with the acetylene torch. But you can see that most people probably won't have access to acetylene torch. So I'm gonna let this cool down. Jake, why don't you get the wide shot again? All right, I got my other piece here that we just annealed with the acetylene torch. And see how much it already warped it and see how much faster that was but i'm just going to do the bed test or to show you guys how, how softer this is now um yeah you can see how how easier that is to work with and if you go back and forth you'll like, yeah work hard it back stronger but it's so much easier anyway that's why i do the little scribbly marks that's what the scribbly marks are for i'm just making the material easier to work with so i hope this video is informative for you guys. Um, I hope you learned something. I know if not all of you all have access to an acetylene torch, so propane and torch and some Sharpie would work you just fine in your garage. Um, and then if you have access to an acetylene torch, you can see how much faster that goes. Um, but work with what you got. Uh, my name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek. If you guys are enjoying my videos, please subscribe and comment and like and do all that fun stuff and stay tuned for more. Thanks again, guys. Hey there, it's Matt Schwartz, Welding Geek, and on this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about, about, a little bit 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 about, a little bit